get my leash all set up how I want it. Now, everybody has their own kind of leash thing. I know some folks like to do a more kind of like this kind of thing, two hands. Let me see if I can focus, uh, not focus, but reorient myself. I can't speak today. So some folks like to do this. Some folks like to wrap it up around their hands and do things like that. I have my own thing, which is this two fingers over, one finger under, pinky under, looks like this. Dog can't pull it out of my hand, comes out the bottom of my hand, and that's how I walk. So we're gonna do my leash holding grip. You guys are welcome to do your own. And so right now, I'm just gonna start working with him on getting him into somewhat of a heel position, see how much he's gonna pull, and try and like problem solve as we work through it. I might do 180s, I might do pops. Um, we'll just check it out, see what we get. So. Ready? So what I'm going to start to feel him out for is, okay, how does he feel about when he's getting pressure from the prong on a walk? Now, it's one thing inside the house. There's not as many distractions. It's not as titillating or inviting. But out here, there's a lot of stuff. What I like to do is I like to walk nice and slow. Reason is, it really forces the dog to work hard and it really lets me know if the dog is truly like moving with me, especially once we get into a heel position. Let's go that way. Can you go that way? So lets me know um, if he's healing with me or just if I'm walking fast and it's just nice and convenient for him. So I'm gonna start adding some little pops. My goal is to have his head in parallel with my hip. Choke up a teeny bit on the leash. So it's pretty, pretty nice. He's not needing much. So heel. The reason I didn't add heel straight away to the command was because I didn't know how he would react. And if you've watched the other videos, you know that I've talked about adding the word straight away. I only add the word straight away if I'm about 99.99999% positive that I'm going to get just about exactly what I want straight away out of the gate. Now with this guy, he's an unknown quantity on the walk, so I wanted to heal. I wanted to make sure that we were in the ballpark and he wasn't going to give me a really hard time before I started laying the heel command on this. But he's already doing well. But he is pulling. Heel. Heel. Guys, I, we've talked about it in other videos. We talked about it just in a Q&A Saturday the other day. Make sure you articulate exactly where you want your heel position to be. And then this isn't a loose leash walk. This isn't about like the dog wandering to and fro. No, this isn't about the dog wandering to and fro or having a big long J in your leash. This is about heel, short but not tight leash. And... I want you guys to articulate in your mind. I want you to already know where do I want his head. So for me, hip bone, cranium. That's where I like it. Marta likes more like this, nose with kind of hip. Some of you folks like more neck and the dog right there. My preference is this. So to each his own but or her own, but make sure whichever one it is, you have it very clear in your mind what it looks like and then correct the moment it moves from that, don't wait until you, your dog's three, four, five, six inches ahead of it. The moment your dog moves an inch out of that golden heel zone, that's when you correct and bring them back. So what you start to do is you start to clarify for the dog, this is where the spot is, this is where the spot is, not this is where the spot is. And then it becomes this kind of amorphous, <laughs> nebulous, uh, ill-defined thing. Big words. Um, anyways, so that's what I'm shooting for. All right. So we're gonna just cross on over. That way um, Marta can get a good view of the actual mechanics, what we're doing um, as we walk this way and hopefully not get hit. Let's go, yep. Yep. So, big dog right there, big Roddy. But this is a really great example, guys. So he typically gets himself pretty worked up, but because I've already got him in a calmer space, I made sure at the threshold that we had nice, calm 
mindset that I've made sure on all of his walks so far, even though it's short, that he's in a good space. So when the rod, he started barking at him, which you can actually see through that, through that wrought iron um, gate, he actually didn't react, which is really nice. So that tells me we've got a mindset in a pretty good space. Yep. Now also, you'll notice that my corrections, I'm not pulling straight back, right? A lot of people correct straight back. I correct because if you notice where the position is with the dog, if he's in the right spot, his head's right there, hips right here, that means my arm is gonna be back here and I'm gonna correct sideways like this. Down the line, when he's really good, I'm not gonna hang my arm back. But for right now, it helps really articulate where I want him without any confusing extra tension when my arm swings like this, or if I have my arm up here. I don't, I want him back here and I wanna make sure my arm doesn't miscue him that he should be further, further up and thus be unfair to him. So what I'm really looking for is right now, I'm going to drop the leash behind me, not actually drop it, but have it like hang straight down exactly where his head should be in conjunction with my body. So that's why if you see my arm backwards a little bit, that's why. Eventually, it'll look like this. But right now in the teaching moment, I wanna help him out and make it clear. And so I'll be back a little bit like this. My corrections will be behind my rear, okay? So, yep. And you see those pops, yep. those pops, I don't know if you're getting a, uh, a real glimpse of them, but how you doing? Good, good. The whole, the whole trick with, with the pops are that, and I'm not gonna worry about Sid or anything right now. So, one thing that I want everybody to think about is that when you go to give your corrections, what most people do is they pull the dog and then they hold on and leave pressure on and they don't release it quickly enough. It needs to be like lightning fast. As fast as you pop it, you should release it just as fast. It should be, nope, it should be just like that, right? So you don't, if, if you pull, if you put pressure on the leash and you leave it on the leash, you're going to, for one, teach your dog not to really care about the correction. And you might amp the dog up and get the dog into a more negative space where they might be, might redirect on you because there's this intense pressure that doesn't go away, or they might just get amped, amped, amped. So make sure your corrections are going to be lightning fast. As fast as you pull, you're going to equally release just as fast. All right. Yep. There's a dog over there. Yep. Do you notice the leash is loose? Heel. I'm walking slow. Yep. Yep. So if you walk slow like this, heel, you'll actually find out if the dog is healing with you or just walking at a pace that's comfortable because you're walking fast for them. Yep. Eventually we'll work up to a different pace, but right now I really want to make sure this is articulated and that I know he's doing the work. Heel. Good. Now a lot of folks might also be wondering, well, how come you're not rewarding him after you say heel and correct him and he moves back? How come you're not rewarding him? Good question. Let me answer it. Because what ends up happening with most dogs, especially amped up dogs like this guy, like you see, like look down at him real quick, just if you can focus that down. Watch what happens when I just touch his forehead, right? Tail wag, like it doesn't look like anything big, but it's like he's so sensitive to any kind of interaction that if I tell him good, good boy, pet, anything like that right now, it's going to most likely cause him to make a mistake and speed up, then he gets corrected. So a lot of folks feel like you have to, you have to reward uh, when the dog's doing the right thing. And there's a time and a place for that, but there's also a time and a place to be a little bit more, 
a, a little bit more intelligent about your assessment of the situation. And if adding more excitement, more energy, more affection, more praise, more interaction causes the dog to get more amped up and then make a mistake, then that's not a good strategy. Then the most helpful strategy for the dog is perhaps zipping, zipping it up, keeping quiet, letting the dog succeed and just turn off the pressure and just enjoy the walk with you. When they get better and more comfortable and can execute it more consistently, then maybe you can start adding praise in there, but only if it helps. I really want to steer people away from this like one size fits all of like, I hear it all the time. Well, you got it. You got to praise him. You got to tell him he's doing the right thing. Really? Well, then he keeps making mistakes and then I have to correct him. Is that, is that good training? Is that, is that, kind training is that taking best care of him no it's setting him up to make mistakes because i know i've got a easily amped up dog and i keep amping him up and he keeps making mistakes so just a little rant that i want you guys to be aware of yep So he's doing really well. Nope. Worried about the manholes. Very, very typical thing for a lot of dogs. We'll worry about that later. Heel. So we've got our spot that we want. I want to make sure I catch him right there. And then eventually we're going to move into doing e-collar heel with him. Heel. E-collar heel with him. But right now, this is just for you prong collar folks. So in case you're just doing prong collar work, because we typically start prong and e-collar same day. Do a little bit different so we can help you guys heal. So we can help you guys who are just doing prong work. But you see how slow I'm moving? Can you imagine how hard it is for a dog who's used to pulling? Heel. Used to pulling and just kind of doing his own thing to have to walk this slow and mind this position. Really, really challenging brain work, but it also tells me this guy's definitely, definitely healing. He's not just moving at a pace that's comfortable for him. Good. So I just gave him a nice verbal marker that was super flat, super neutral, like good. Good. So what I like is that the foundation work we've already done inside with place command and thresholds Handler stops, dog stops, handler stops, dog stops. What we're seeing is I didn't really have to do anything here. I stopped, handler, dog stopped, dog. So that's really nice. Once again, we'll work on the sits at corners and everything else like that down the line. But I'm trying to keep this one piece at a time so we don't overwhelm you guys with too much information. So, but I like how he's doing. Um, do you want to just keep going this way? Okay. And if you want to go out in the street and like, Take your chances, you can, you can see how you do. Yep. Yep. So also another point with this, a lot of people ask, well, should I be staring at my dog the whole time? And you'll hear a lot of dog trainers say, don't look at your dog, just look forward, just like march and do your thing, heel. Problem is in the initial stages, if you're teaching a dog to heel and you're not watching their position, you're screwed because you're not going to know when they make heel, when they make that small mistake and start to forge out. So initially, you're going to see me really watching heel, really watching him. And then as he gets really solid heel and really good at this, I'll be able to just walk and I'll notice without, I'll be able to walk. And when he starts to move out of the golden kind of heel position, I'll notice it. I'll feel it in my arm, all that stuff. Right now, I need to watch him like a hawk. Okay, so let's uh, continue to go. And uh, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Okay, ready? Heel. I'm also gonna do something right now and let him go potty. Go potty. So potty time, like dogs are gonna, People that get worried that, oh man, this is so militant, the dog doesn't get to have any fun or do anything. For one, he's learning. Right now it's learning time. He's in school, so it's not play time. But beyond that, 
your dog is going to get to basically do all the same stuff. He's going to get to sniff. He's going to get to pee. He's going to get to explore, but on your permission. He's not going to drag you to a bush. He's not going to drag you to a tree. He's not going to drag you to some lawn and, and, and do his thing. That is a very, very bad conversation to have with your dog. And it's going to teach your dog that if I want something, all I have to do is muscle you through it. And then I get what I want. If I drag you to that plant, man, it's happened nine times. Might as well keep going. Might as well keep doing the thing because it works. So once again, get my leash all set. So his nose wants to get him into trouble. He's like sniffing the plants as he goes by. I'm gonna just like go on by you. Wait this side. Yep. So I'm gonna speed up, see how he does with a little more speed. Speed can easily get him heel. See? Already like excited. Heel. A little bit faster. It's causing a little bit more energy and juice with him. But nothing crazy. I really thought he was going to pull more, so I'm pretty thrilled with this. We'll head that way. Yep. Yep. But imagine if you came out with him without having done any of the prior work, without having done a prong collar introduction. Nope. Without having done a prong collar introduction, place command or thresholds, no. Then all of a sudden you've got a dog for the first time on a prong out in the wild world where things are the most distracting, the most interesting, and the chances of you having a, <laughs> an unpleasant experience are pretty high. So now I'm starting to move into a little bit more of a natural pace. But what I can do is then switch it up, heel, and teach him Start the process of teaching him that heel isn't a speed. Heel's a position. So if I'm slow, he's got to be right there with me. If I'm fast, he's got to be right there with me. If I'm jogging, he's got to be right there with me. Heel. Heel. All right, so we're gonna to continue to walk down there after this car goes and uh, see what we get. And then we'll head back around and kind of wrap this up. It'd be a nice first walk. Yep. Yep, so he's trying to move out ahead. I'm gonna to start to move into a more natural pace. Yep. Don't be surprised when you go up or down curbs if you see your dog start to speed up. Pretty natural thing. Yep. You can also see that I'm not having to watch him quite as carefully. Heel. Now I'm looking straight down rather than at him like this because I can kind of see what his position is. I've got the leash short enough that if it gets tight, I can feel it. So we're starting to get into a bit of a zone. Over the next few days, this will be a nice heel, be a nice little walk. Once we get the e-collar on, it should be a piece of cake. I personally prefer the e-collar yep. for most dogs that have, well, any dog that's got like real reactivity yep. or is really inclined to pull, e-collar is just way easier on the dog, way easier on the handler. You don't have to keep like tugging, tugging, tugging. But if it's the only tool that you've got, yep, then it can work really effectively. You just have to work a little bit harder. So I'm at about, I'm almost at a natural pace. Just a little bit slower than usual because I walk fast. 
Yep. So we made the turn. Whatever reason, he got interested, excited, sped up. I'm going to give some room for this guy over here. Right here. How you doing? Yep. He wasn't thrilled about the whole dog training thing. Okay, so I'm going to really speed up. Nope. Before I do, let me give you a piece of uh, information, a little tip here. So a lot of folks do this work for healing and getting the dogs to move with them in kind of a big open area. And that's great. And if that works for you, fantastic. If you've got a you know, park you like to work at or a big parking lot or inside facility, whatever, whatever works best for you. I have to say, uh, being a product of my environment, which is city dog training, being out on sidewalks, I really love to train dogs to heal on the sidewalks because the sidewalks work so well uh, helping you to kind of like initially create a corridor for the dog. So basically all you're really doing, and I'm gonna give you a little extra piece of advice, all you're really doing is just making sure the dog's forward and backward motion is right where it needs to be in your heel, rather than this way, left and right, you know, inside, close to you and away from you. So the sidewalk actually works as a bit of your friend. Uh, it, it works as an ally to help keep the dog moving in kind of like, you know, the dog, the dog is, is keenly aware of the boundaries, even if it's just grass or something, right? So I like teaching dogs to walk, to heal on the city streets. I'm just going to say it loud and proud. That's how I feel about it. That said, be careful. Is this camera focused on me? Are you looking at houses over there? I see what you're doing. So she's busy like shopping, looking at like place like, oh, that's a nice place. I know you. I know. Very good. All right. Let, let, let's focus back over here. So here's the tip I want to give you. So if you are training um, and using the sidewalk, using just like your basic city street, um, or even if you don't have sidewalks, if, if you've just got, uh, you know, like a, just a, a street and like a curb coming up, just don't walk too close to the plants or the grass on that side initially. You don't want to, we got somebody coming up here. I'm just going to move over this way. Come here, bud. Come here. How you doing? So back over here. So you don't want to put the dog right next to like grass, plants, bushes early on because they're going to be very inclined to go over and sniff them. So make it easier on them initially. And then as the dog gets really good, you've heard me do it several times, like correct him and say, no, that's for him going over towards plants and trying to sniff. So some of our sidewalks are kind of tight here. So you really want to just be conscious of it. Otherwise you're going to be correcting your dog con consistently or constantly for moving towards plants, moving towards the grass, trying to get off the sidewalk and, and see what's over there. So keep a bit of a space, uh, try and walk right down the middle of the sidewalk and then incrementally start moving the challenge up for your dog as you go. All right, so with that said, we're gonna be mindful of how close we get him because we know he loves to sniff to the, the edge of the sidewalk, grass, bushes, plants, things like that. Some of this I will only have so much luck with because it's New Orleans and it's pretty tropical and we got stuff coming in. Um, I'm gonna pick up my pace, I'm gonna speed it up, slow it down, nothing too challenging, but I'm gonna kind of feel him out, see how he does with it. And uh, we'll just see how the walk looks, but so far so good. This is his first walk. There's been no like tricks. There's been no like secretly training him. There's been no getting him into a great space first. We just headed out the door, crossed our fingers, hoped it would be a nice introduction for you guys. So far so good, <laughs> besides the uh, the action going on down there. Ready? So let's let's uh, keep rolling. Ready, bud? Yep. Yep. So a bunch of bushes up here or little hedges or whatever the hell these are called. No. So I'm going to walk them right down the middle so I don't put them too close. Eventually, 
day or so, I can walk him closer and correct him for trying to get in there. Right now, heel. Right now, I want to make it easy for him. Now let's head down this way. Yep. Yep. So I'd have to say, guys, it's a pretty nice heel, pretty nice, good first walk. Even though you hear me correcting him and saying heel, it's really heel. That's how it should be. I'm teaching him a new thing. I'm teaching him, here's the position, here's the position, here's the position. And his natural dogginess is saying, but I want to go faster, which I get. Like, And there'll be a time for that. There'll be a time for off-leash play and fun and frolic. But the time isn't right now. The walk is about walking safely with me, right at my side, right at my pace, not getting into any trouble, not being a maniac, not tuning out, yep, not disregarding all that stuff. We're on a mission. Yo. Another piece of advice, a little friendly tip. If you're having your trainer or your partner or somebody working with you as you're doing this, heel. If you're having anybody work with you while you're doing this, no. Make sure if you're working with a trainer and doing this, or you're working with a trainer and your partner and doing this, or whatever the combination might be, have them be parallel to you. Because what's going to happen in the early stages, if your partner is ahead or your trainer's ahead, it's going to cause the dog to want to move towards the other person. And then you're going to be overly correcting the dog because the dog is like excited because someone's moving. Just like when Marta moved by with the camera, he sped up and I had to correct him. So eventually down the line, he should be able to ignore all of that and have no problems with it, navigate it perfectly. But right now, first walk ever with me on the prong. So I don't want to add more challenge than uh, I need to. But I also want you guys to be conscious of all the little things that you might not think about that could be sabotaging your walk from walking too close to the plants, having people walk like even two feet ahead of you. When we do go home sessions, you'll notice the whole team tries to walk right in parallel to where it doesn't make it overly challenging for the owners and the dog. So that said, you ready bud? Yep. Yep. And I can tell he's, he's interested because Marta's ahead. Typical dog stuff, like heaven forbid you've got a German Shepherd. If you got a German Shepherd, it would probably be like screaming and wailing that one of the one of the party is up ahead and not in the group right here. So we got it easy. This guy's nice and quiet. And you know, even with these small corrections that I've been doing, you might have a vocal dog. Yo, you might have a vocal dog that might even vocalize at these little things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're hurting your dog. It just means that you've got a vocal dog. Some dogs, you can walk up to them and they'll vocalize. You know, you can walk up to go put a leash on them and they'll vocalize. Um, you know, it's every dog's got different sensitivity levels and they're not all just about like physical sensitivity. Sometimes it's just mental sensitivity. They're just like, just edgy, overly anxious dogs like that. So. But I have to, it's like being back in LA with the blowers. Yo. So let's turn left so we can avoid all that. Let's go this way. So as soon as Marta's behind us, he walks better. So just a, a little point for you guys to see. Worried about the broken up concrete. Plants, heel. Now we're actually moving at a pretty good pace. Worried about, worried about the manhole. I'm gonna slow down, heel. See him checking in. Now we can speed up. I'm 
Let's slow down. Heal. There you go. So now I'm modulating and giving him a little bit of feedback that I like what he's doing because I can tell he's able to hold himself heal pretty good. So I can give him a little bit of verbal markers that I like what he's doing. Good. Very neutral. Tiny touch on the head, neutral verbal marker, verbal marker, good. That's it. Heel. And I don't know about you guys, but this is a pretty nice walk. Heel. So for a dog's first walk in training, I'd say most owners would be pretty thrilled with a walk like this for their dog who used to not walk so nice and be reactive and have issues on the walk and has nipped somebody actually on the walk. So big dog, no. So gang, don't wait until your dog reacts. Get ahead of your dog mentally. If you see a dog or a cat and you see your dog staring at them or start to stare, correct right then. Don't wait to see like, I wonder if he'll explode. There's a very good chance he will. So first walk on prong, awesome. Yep. Even little reminders like that, no problem. We haven't needed 180s. We haven't needed anything big, anything you know substantial. It's all been very mild stuff. Heel. So you notice the distraction. Person coming out of the house. He started to speed up. Worried about the stuff behind him. Nice work. So that's Ernie's first walk on a prong collar ever. So like I said, nothing up my sleeve <laughs> or sleeves and uh, just basically stacking all the different moments of doing the work to ensure that we've got the best chance of success. That doesn't mean that we couldn't have come out here and had a really tough time, that he couldn't have been explosively reactive or exceptionally determined to pull on the leash. Um, no matter what, I would have had to get more creative. I might have done 180s. Um, I might have done different things. I might have turned into him. I might, who knows? But he didn't necessitate any of that stuff. And so this is a good example of kind of like, I'd say Aussie's like your most like middle of the road dog. This guy's up a few levels, but he's nothing that's incredibly challenging. Now, that might be because I'm like, doing some good stuff and maybe I did some good training ahead of time and got him into a good space and I'm not goosing him with markers or verbal praise that's making him make mistakes. Um, I'm not, I'm trying not to do anything that's going to be counterproductive for our end goal. So maybe uh, I've done a good job. Um, I'd say it's a good combination, a little partnership here. But what I mainly want you guys to take away more than anything is the stacking of all the different moments of all the different pieces of the training puzzle which help lead to something that's successful. Uh, I think people oftentimes just think you know you put the prong collar on you go out and you do the walk and you cross your fingers it's like you can do it but it's much better if you stack all these different little training moments and then everything starts to make sense you've got a much you've got a much more prepared dog and a much more prepared you to uh, try and ensure success. So first prong collar walk, Ernie and TGD's how to 2.0, another one in the bag. And uh, who knows what's next? We'll see, stay tuned.